Howdy, Mr. Pete here, your YouTube shop teacher. Welcome back to beautiful Studio B. And this is Tips 1010, and it's all about showing you how to reverse the motor, which isn't easy, on this little Vivor sander grinder. Now, I hope you have watched uh, the older video, and that was number 1076, where I... Uh, reviewed the sander and uh, I don't know that was a very popular video for s some reason very popular at the box office so I'm going to continue on that but before I start with this and it's kind of complicated uh, got a few things I want to say about a video that really came out just today and today is January 10th 2025 and the title is tips number 1075 my wife almost killed me. So that's been a popular one for the last uh, 10 hours. So check it out if you haven't seen it already. Obviously she didn't kill me. She made a valiant attempt. But before I get into this, I want to review a few things from that uh, previous video I just mentioned uh, about my wife. Now make sure you watch that or don't even bother watching it, but go in there and read some of the comments. There are hundreds of really great comments about other near-death experiences. So, let's begin. So, upon your recommendations, collectively, I am taking uh, some remedial action on what happened in that uh, safety video. And uh, I'm going to start with talking about the strings on a hoodie. we got to remove those. And, you know, somebody said, when is the last time you actually put this on and tied that in a bow? Never! And probably you never have either. Very difficult to tie a bow right here anyway. So what are we going to do? Cut the darn thing off on your suggestions and summarily throw it away. And number two, make sure you hold your work down on the uh, drill press. First of all, it needs to be in a vise, but sometimes the vise itself needs to be fastened down, clamped or whatever, because in, in my case with that big chunk of lead, the whole vise, first of all, it pulled up, it screwed its way into the bit, broke the bit off, and then spun around and gave me this minor uh, cut here, which is nothing, but I still feel a little bit of, uh, it was a bruise too, but no big deal. And the third thing is before you work on anything electrical like a garage door although I was working on lights trip the breaker or lock out tag out or unplug or whatever it takes to shut off the power all right <laughs> that's enough about safety let's talk about this nightmare okay let's take a look at this now and I'm going to start it up, and i got it running at real slow speed, but you can see it's running. They call it down, but I call this forward. I'll turn it back off. Now remember that these belts are directional. Can you see the arrow? So when you reverse this, you also need to reverse the, the belt so that the arrow would be pointing the other direction, and that's all about the splice. Now, I'm never going to run it in reverse, and that's why I didn't cover that in the earlier video. Furthermore, in the Communist Manifesto here, little or nothing was mentioned about that. Now, could they be kind and just forget about all these controls and put in a toggle switch that says oh, three position, off, on, forward, and reverse but oh no or put a nice drum switch on here which is bigger than this controller and probably cost more no no that's too easy well I had many people ask me what kind of motor this is and some said it was a servo motor others said it was a DC motor but it clearly says right here that it's a permanent magnet brushless motor whatever that means. Now I told you there was not a decent set of instructions in the Communist Manifesto, so apparently we have to use our QR code reader and get it up from the internet. Let's see if that works. Okay, I scanned it and got this, so let's see what it says. Alright, so there we got some information. Now I'm not going to read that 
through. It's way too much at this time, and I don't know how many pages there are, but it's all about this controller here, which uh, is a mystery box to probably most of you. But I received out of the clear blue from a viewer up in the suburbs of Chicago, and uh, he sent this by email, uh, directions on reversing it, and his name is Ron Riato, and thank you very much, Ron, for uh, sending me that information because it never occurred to me to look it up on the QR code. Now, I will put a still of this at the end, or you can QR code it yourself. You younger guys got this figured out. It's nothing for you. Now, I do not remember if this needed programming when I first got it, because that's already a month or so ago, but if it already works just fine on forward, which is what you can see right now, just follow the directions, the last three steps here, and you can very easily put it into reverse. Let me demonstrate. Also, remember that this number here, 7890, is significant. I wrote it there. And that 0 stands for forward, and 1 stands for reverse. They couldn't just have FR. No, they have to have 0 and 1. Binary! Okay, the sander is running in forward. Let's reverse it. So in order to do that, press both the P and the S at the same time. And notice that a P05 appeared. Boy, that doesn't show up too well on screen. But it's a P-05. That is P-05. All right, now I'm going to push Save. And we have a zero here. Now a zero is for forward, one is for reverse, so by pushing the, the minus button you can see I can toggle back and forth between zero and one, and since I want to reverse it, I'll put it on one, save, now watch the arrow. Can you see that it's running the other way? Awesome, but now remember, if you're running it in reverse, you have to take the belt off and reverse it, as I just told you, but you also have to retract this thing, and it sure is tricky. To me, that's so far, that's the biggest disadvantage, and it doesn't track, mine doesn't track very well in reverse at all. So, it's running in reverse, which they call up. I don't understand that at all. Well... China's all the way through the world, so, you know, it's upside down, I guess. But anyway, let's, let's put it in forward again to do that. Both of those buttons, and it does say P05, and I, I guess that helps, doesn't it? All right, so save it. That's the S. And we want to put it into zero, so either one of these will toggle it. So now I'm on zero. Save it. And it is again running in forward, or what they call down. Down. Now, two things I want to tell you. If you kind of get stuck and it's not doing what you want, turn it off. Now, it takes about 10 seconds to go off. It's like a computer. It's just not on and off. You know, it takes a while. And then you'll see the light go off, and when it does, restart it and that may or may not help you. Now, if this doesn't work for you, right down here at the bottom that I talked about, go through this entire step here, and that series of steps, and that will uh, get you back in the ballpark in case some of the memory is lost. Again, this is a computer controlling a sander instead of a toggle switch, so it gets a little bit complicated. Thank you to Ron for sending this, and again, look at the stills at the end. It may very well help you. I know I got rambling earlier on safety, but I hope you got a kick out of that and that this helps you. Now, one other thing before I click off here, there will be another video on this. So what I'm going to do is I've got this plate of aluminum that's half inch thick, and I'm going to put a little bevel along here on the milling machine, and then I'm going to get it mounted onto the aluminum plate, the sander onto the plate, because do you remember in my original 
video I was doing some grinding and the whole thing got pushed away from me. Now there's several fixes. One is to make a plate and maybe be better off with a, with a steel plate, but then it gets kind of heavy. The other would be, and I better turn that off while I'm handling it because we're talking about safety. <laughs> you can get some of those little rubber feet that either glue on or some of them have a uh, a thread on them and then you can put a nut on there. I, I think they call them isolators. Also I have some of these rubber feet and they just pull off and they get adhesive on the back and there's those probably will work. I'll probably put them on the big aluminum plate but since they glue on you know you never can trust glue. It always fails when you need it the most and might peel off as you move the thing around. Uh, I'm not sure I haven't experimented with it that much. And if anyone has any good fixes on tracking this thing and uh, keeping it in track, you know, let me know. Maybe I can pass that on. But one thing that uh, so many of you said, and I totally agree, they said, well, why didn't they crown the wheels? Either this one or maybe all of them. And then the belt, of course, will stay on center. You know, I know all about that. You've seen me crown wheels. I was crowning wheels clear back when I was in high school. You know, my dad told me about crown on wheels. He was talking about steam engines. Or then he even elaborated about the crown on the road for the water to run off. So, you know, I, sometimes I got more information than I wanted, the same as I'm giving you more information than you could ever want it. All right. I hope that helps you. It's Mr. Pete saying so long for now and be sure and watch some of my 1800, yes, 1800 other videos plus about 250 chapters that are in my courses. Have a good day. And one other thing I wanted to say about drill press safety because again there's probably more accidents on drilling machines than any other. But Read through the comments, as I just said. But interesting, one man said that he has a stop switch, you know, the big safety switch right in the middle of the head of the drill press, and he can bump it with his head to turn the machine off. And boy, do I wish that I had that. But several others said you ought to have a foot switch. So this is a Dayton switch. I've had it for years. I would simply plug the uh, drill press into this little receptacle, and then plug the other end into the wall and then I've got on and off. But these kind of scare me like you could bump them. But I did have a better one and I gave it to my friend Danny down in Bloomington but it, it was more heavy duty and commercial and it had like a toe cover on it. So you couldn't possibly drop a wrench or your work or something on it and turn the drill press on. So in the comments if you want to, leave a little of um, uh, your thoughts on having a foot switch. Notice there's some rubber here on the bottom on a drill press. What do you think of that? All right, let's get on with it here. Another thing I want to suggest for those of you that like my videos, from time to time go back into a video that you liked and just read the comments. But uh, And I believe I said that already, but what I wanted to say now is that I answer 90% of the comments and sometimes it takes me forever. For instance, there was almost a thousand comments on how my wife almost killed me. So that takes a long, long time. I love reading the comments, but I, as I said, I answer most of them. But do you people out there actually see my answers? That's, that's my big question. Put that in the comments, if you will, because I'm going to stop answering them if the, the that message does not come to you because then it's just fruitless as you can imagine how long it takes for me to read through you know 900 or more comments and leave a message even if it's only a thumbs up let me know